Today we are experimenting with color to go from something like this to something that looks like this using only filters inside of Animal Photo Raw. If you want to follow along, you can download this file in the description box below. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to come up here and click on original. It's just going to give me the original image. And the very first thing that I want to do is come to tone and color. We're not going to use bronze AI because I think it's important for everyone to understand what's happening to their image when they are editing it. And sometimes it's good to just do some of the editing manually. That being said, we're going to start off with a color profile. And this is only available on raw images. This happens to be a raw image, so we have access to it. And I am going to just cycle through these until I get something that looks relatively warm and vibrant. And I think that On One Vivid gives us that. So I'm going to select On One Vivid for this photo. Now, I will give you a quick note that sometimes you'll see camera profiles or uh, profiles that start with camera and then the profile name, as well as you'll see some files that say DCP. For this particular image, we don't have access to that, and it is based off of camera manufacturer and the file that you're working with. So just keep that in mind. But on all raw images, you'll have access to at least these options to change your camera profile, which does change the color in the image. I don't think I need to worry about exposure right this second. But I do want a more contrasty image, so I'm just going to push up on the contrast slider just a little bit. A little goes a long way, and I think that that works out well. I'm going to hold down the J key. You can see I'm losing some detail here in lights, but I don't plan to print this, and I don't think that that's a huge issue. So if I need to come back and recover those, I can come to highlights by just pressing and holding the J key and just recover those very easily. Um, but I don't like what it does to the sky, so that's the reason why I'm not recovering the highlights. But for the midtones, what I want to do is kind of just pull those back because I want this to be a darker image. It's at sunset. We see all the lights on, so let's just go ahead and get a little bit more of that fill. And then we'll also pull down on the shadows. You don't have to pull like crazy hard. A little, again, goes a long way. Now, I do want a more robust black point, but we're already starting to push up against the edge here. I'm not losing any information, so I could probably uh, move the black point down just a little bit further. And you can see we're losing some information over here on the left side. But I'm OK with that because I don't need any detail along this water line or whatever, the coastline. All right. Next step is to increase some structure. So let's just go ahead and push up on the structure and you could go crazy with it, but when you do that, it brightens up the image and I don't want to brighten the image. I just want to add more structure around the edges of items in the photo. So maybe somewhere around here looks pretty good. And then you could play around with the D Hay slider. I like what it does as far as like making the colors a little bit more yellow-ish and or golden, which is kind of what I want to go with. So I'm just going to decrease the haze. So here's the before, what we came into On One Photo Raw with. And after tone and structure, this is what we have, which is looking pretty good. Now, I'm just going to minimize the tone and the structure section so we can focus in on the color section. Now, one of the fastest ways to manipulate the colors in your image is to creatively set your white balance. And you don't have to worry so much about what white balance number you should get. As long as you're working in the Kelvin scale, I want to be clear. If you're going to set your white balance, it should be in the develop section and you want to use the Kelvin scale. That's this little K with a degree symbol on the left of it. If you click that, you get the point system. The point system is not my favorite. It doesn't work very well. And like if I increase the temperature slider here, it's not very gradual. It's just very like aggressive. However, if I go to the Kelvin 
degree scale, I get access to way more variations. And this is what I love about using the Kelvin scale. Now, in an image like this, where there's only two primary colors for the most part, you have orange and then you have blue. Those are already complementary colors and they do really well working in harmony together. So those are also the same colors or coincidentally, they are the same colors that are on the temperature slider, blue and yellow, if you will, right? Orange is close to yellow, so that's why I'm saying it. But with that being said, you have this contrast of warm tone to dark tone in the image. And so you can really use your temperature slider in an image like this to establish what you want to be the dominant profile tone, if you will. So if I want it to be more of a bluish image, which I think looks really, really good, then I can pull it to the left. Or if I wanna highlight a little bit more of the warmer tones in the image, which in my opinion are just accents because 80% of the frame is blue and the rest of the image is just these little golden nuggets, if you will. Uh, but if I wanted to highlight those a little bit more and not push the blue, then this is a great place to kind of establish that. Now, what I'm gonna do is set this to as shot and leave it there for just a second because I need to work with my saturation and my vibrance. And the reason I wanna be able to see what the original image looked like as I start to increase the vibrance, which is just going to help pull out some of those less saturated colors and keep the other, the higher saturated colors at bay. So you're kind of like balancing the lower saturated colors to reach the same level as the other colors that already had a lot of saturation. And so that's the reason why I like to start with vibrance. And then saturation, it just boosts all of the colors in the image to increase that look. And so I like what I have right here and we haven't even left the develop module. Now, if I say, okay, I really want to accentuate the blue tones in the image. Well, now I can come over to my temperature slider and I can just pull that back, but I don't have to go like crazy. And I'm already starting to get a blue and gold look, which it was already present in the image. We're just pulling that out. So if I hold down the backslash key, here's the before, and here is the after. Now, of course, if this is too much, then you can absolutely just back that off and maybe even pull back on the vibrance and the saturation, all right? So now that we have our basic develop settings, it's time to jump over to the effects tab and start working there. The first thing that we're gonna add is a color enhancer. And I love working with the color enhancer for the effect that we're gonna do right this second, you could use the color mixer, but I personally like to use the color enhancer. It's my favorite color manipulation tool, if you will, or at least my go-to. And I'm gonna start with the oranges. And what I wanna do here is kind of push the oranges more towards yellow, all right? So I'm just going to move the hue more towards yellow. It's a subtle shift, but it does help overall. And then I'm going to mess around with the saturation here because I don't need them to be like crazy saturated, but I also don't want them to be less saturated. I just want them to have their own space in the image. And again, I'm treating these more like an accent in the image as opposed to a primary star, all right? The, the star is the blue, or at least the base is the blue, and then you have the gold here that's just kind of standing out. Then I'm gonna come over to the blue and I am going to pull down on the brightness and you can see how that helps with the gold standing out. And then I'll push the saturation a little bit as well. And maybe I'll make the blue a little bit more, more purple. I kind of like that look. And then we'll take the purples and push those towards blue and then saturate that just a touch and maybe brighten it and 
if you're not noticing, the purple is coming right around the top of the city line that's meeting up with the sky here. So if I make this lighter and darker, you can see kind of where that's coming up at. Um, and so this is more like a rim light and subjective. You don't have to spend a whole lot of time trying to tweak that. But let's go ahead and turn the color enhancer off and turn it back on. And you can see it just helps to deepen the color profile. And I like that. So the next step is I need to do something with this water because there's a nice like blurred look that's going on here. But then we also have these streaks that are coming through here. So it doesn't look the greatest in my opinion. So we're going to go add filter and we're going to come to blur. Then before I do anything else, I'm just going to click on this, go up to mask layer. And when I say click on this, I mean click on the mask layer to access my masking properties. Hit the plus icon, hover over gradient, and then I want to subtract this from the top of the image and only apply this to the bottom. And you can see how that's already working there. I'm going to make a shorter transition between the effect and the non effect, if you will. And I'll put it maybe somewhere around there. Now I need to make this look natural as if that were uh, the case, you know, on the day, like a long exposure type look. And so what I'll do is pull down on the amount and you can see how that's just starting to blend that a little bit better. And then I think I'm actually going to change this from Gaussian to motion. And the reason I think that long exposure does well with motion blur and it just looks good. So I'm just going to pull the distance on here and also increase the smoothing just a bit. And that looks a little bit better overall. You can also adjust the angle to make it make sense for whatever you want to do. Maybe somewhere around there. And we can just pull. Yeah, we'll keep the smoothing up a little bit. Maybe shorten the distance. I'm not gonna like mess with that a whole lot. You can see the effect that it has on the image. So let's just pull down on the opacity just a bit. Let some of that original kind of shine through. Eh, maybe not. All right. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on the blur, but you get the idea of where I was going with this particular blur and just making this less prominent and bringing some of that focus up here towards the top. Maybe it just needs a better fade. Yeah. Okay. So now we can focus here on the rest of the image and that's just going to be a simple color grade. So we'll hit add and then we'll come up to our color grading tool. And I want to work with just the midtones on this particular image. So I'm just going to grab the midtones and I want this to be a little bit more of a warm color. And what I'm going to do is move the outer circle, this outer node, this is the hue adjustment node for your color grading pucks. And so if you move that around, that's how you get to select what color is actually being added into the image. And so I want to go maybe around here. That sounds that looks about right. And then I'm going to hold down the shift key and I am going to work on saturating and desaturating until I get something that I think looks pretty decent, maybe right around here. And then in the shadows, I want to put a little bit of blue. So I'm just going to pull this towards the blue and then I'm going to rock this back and forth until I find a nice blue look that I want for my shadows and then holding down the shift key, I can click and drag the saturation of how much blue I actually put into those shadows. Now, I think that that looks about appropriate. And with the color grading tool, you can make those shadowed areas brighter or darker. Obviously, 
their shadows so I think that they should be a little bit darker so somewhere around here is probably pretty good and this is probably what I would do with this image holding down the backslash key looking at the before and now looking at the after this image looks really nice I think it will do really well to have a vignette on it so let's add a vignette We'll come to styles, select big softy. Yeah, that's really pulling it together. I, I, I'm I digging this with the vignette on it. So turning it off and turning on the vignette, you can see how that's really starting to help make this image look that much better. Um, what we could also do now that I'm looking at it, this area should be the focus point so let's come over here to local we'll hit plus go to gradient hit add we're going to change this gradient over to oh we'll go with a strong vignette and then we'll just increase the center point there and we'll just put this right over the city now you could do this with a brush tool, you could do this with all kinds of stuff, but I'm just going to use the vignette tool and you could see how that's helping to just bring a little bit of attention into the area. Now with the new version of On One Photo Raw, you can see I'm getting kind of like a halo over here. So what I could do is now that I have the vignette in the area where I would want it to be, I can come over here to my mask layers, hit the plus icon, and then I could hover over sky and I could select subtract the sky and it will remove the sky from the gradient. However, everything else in the gradient, it stays in the area where I placed it. And so now I could reposition this and do all kinds of stuff to make sure that I'm putting the light exactly where I want it and it's not going to go into the sky at least not too much it's a little bit of spill over there it doesn't have to be entirely perfect unless you're printing this like really large but let's take a look at the before and the after now that's probably way too much so let's just pull down on our opacity and then kind of just fade that in it's going to be brighter than everywhere else but not to the point that it looks brighter than everything else it's just perceived to be brighter so here is the before straight out of camera and here is the final product that we got hopefully you found some value in today's content if you did smash the like button and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more if you got questions about using on one photo raw leave it in the comment section below if you want to save some money when you pick up on one photo raw or shopping over at the on one store consider using my coupon code that's down in the description box below and the affiliate links. I do make a commission from everyone who uses them, but it's at no extra charge to you. In fact, you get to save money, so it's a win-win for everyone involved. And until next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.